Greetings, YouTube. I don't know why, but lately people have just been asking, like, Prof, when's the new season of Alliance Quest going to happen? And I'm always like, how the hell am I supposed to know? I don't work for Kabam, thank God. Uh, I know just as little as anybody else. Well, now we don't have to worry anymore, or wonder anymore, because it's Season 8, Alliance Quest, Apocalyptic Mutiny, otherwise known as when my students try to uh, turn assignments in late in my classes. Summoners, your alliances have fought valiantly against the likes of Doctor Doom and have overcome the Latvarian invasion. But as one threat is quelled, another lurks just on the horizon. Mutant kind, your time has come. Stand together and prepare to face the next threat, launching December 3rd. That is soon. Mutant and proud. This season, we're making significant changes to how Alliance Quest empower your roster of champions. We're experimenting with boosting a particular set of champions while not punishing players for choosing not to use those champions. Or I would say, most impor importantly, for not having those champions, right? That's what's tough when Kabam wants you to use champions that people just don't have because you're still at the mercy of drop rates. Through this, we hope to encourage the use of different champions in Alliance Quests and to give summoners more reason to explore the depth of their roster, aka to make more money off of uh, rank-up materials, I'm sure, too. But we also don't want to punish players, again, for not knowing or having those champions. This season is all about mutants and X-Men, and we've got a whole new set of rotating global buffs that will support them, but won't negatively affect you for choosing not to use them. That's cool. New season of new bosses. Doom's reign is over, but it won't be just one new boss taking its place this time. For the first time ever, Alliance Quest will feature two different bosses, depending on which map your alliance chooses to run. This way, lower tier alliances will be able to face a boss that is more suited to their progression level, aka they're more of a, you know, while a more complex boss will challenge higher tier alliances. All right, so we got uh, map one, final boss, Dr. Doom. <laughs> Good luck with that. Uh, map two, uh, final boss, Doom. And then, of course, I should say that was the old. Uh, updated is Professor X. Professor X is still a tough boss, you know? Same for map two. Mini boss beast, so that's not bad. Map three, Professor X. I hate fighting Professor X. I don't know. Map four, Professor X. Map 5, Apocalypse. I actually would rather fight Apocalypse than Professor X. Maybe that means I'm crazy. I don't know. Uh, new buffs, Vigor, Empowered Immunity, Stupefy for Map 5. Mini bosses, Emma Frost. Uh, map 6, Final Boss, Apocalypse, Vigor, Empowered Immunity, Stupefy. Mini boss, Bishop. And then Map 7. Final Boss, Apocalypse with Vigor, Empowered Immunity, Stupefy, Cutting Wires. Mini boss Sasquatch pre rebalance. Interesting. New buffs. Remove delayed reaction. 200% health boost was 300%. Mini boss Magneto. Polka dot power. Sadist. Flux dispersal and physical resistance. That should be. That should put the FU in fun. Uh, Magneto House of X. Okay. Heavy hitter. Mighty charge. Power struggle. Two strike. You know. You know. I always hear from people that say, Prof, it's exciting when champions get buffed, but that also means it's going to be tough or more tough to fight them in content and this is a good example of like hey magneto got buffed that's awesome for attackers but that also means they can do some pretty scary things with them as alliance quest bosses or i'm sure if you put them in alliance war new buffs as we mentioned before we're taking new design philosophy with alliance quest this season empowering and bolstering a group of champions with each season without negatively affecting other champions we want to give players the option to use the group of empowered champions but not make them feel like they are mandatory to find success first the class ascendancy buffs are gone Gene splicing. If a mutant on your team is affected by a bleed, poison, shock, or incinerate, cold snap debuff for five seconds total in a fight, they purify all of that type of debuff and reduce the potency of any future debuffs of that type by 100%. So, hey, maybe Gambit would be even more fun now. Who knows? For each mutant brought on your team, each of your mutant gains the following abilities for mutagenic symbiosis. One mutant, your offensive power rate is increased by 5% per mutant. Two mutants, each time the attacker fills a bar of power, generate a passive prowess, increasing the special attack damage by up to 15%, maybe, per mutant on your team. It can be stacked up to two times. Three mutants, special attacks become unblockable while above four prowess. Additionally, for each stack of prowess, increase attack rating during special attacks. I mean, that's cool, but as somebody who does map five, is that going to make me be like, well, I can't take in Corvus now? No, probably not. I'll still take in Corvus. Crossfight, entering into a fight with any mutant without a mutiny passive grants them three which are, per are persistent throughout the quest. Each mutiny passive grants the attacker 20% bonus to ability accuracy, a 30% passive prowess. Uh, X or size dominance. All X-Men tagged attackers gain 100% chance to gain one second unblockable passive. Excalation, based on the number of X-Men tagged champions in your team. X-Men attackers gain the following benefits. Vigilance passive, true accuracy passive. 
X-Men Tag Champions can block unblockable special attacks. That's pretty cool. I like that. And lastly, we're adding a new global buff. Uh, I'm just going to call this KM because I know I'm going to butcher it. The more effective Alliance Quest champion brought into this quest gets a passive plus 200% fury for the duration of the quest. That's why Cyclops is awkwardly dabbing. What's up, Cat Murdoch? Pretty legend, legendary member of the uh, community. I'll definitely say that. Uh, to add even more variety, minions on maps 1 through 5 will now also rotate based on the map variation. Doombots, Ultron drones, and symbioids. I like that. Here is the big thing, though. The Glory Store update, which is already insane considering what it was. But hey, we, we like uh, Throne Breaker. Yes. Okay, so you've got uh, 10,800 Tier 2 Alpha fragments for the Glory Store. That's incredible. 6,750 Tier 5 Basic Callus fragments. The Tier 5 Class Callus Fragment Crystal is a huge addition. Um, but will I buy that since it's a crystal? If it was a selector, I'd snatch that up every time. But until it's a selector, I think I'm just going to continue to buy Tier 2 Alpha Catalyst Fragments and Tier 5 Basic Catalyst Fragments. That's awesome. But the rewards are still insane for glory. And I'm sure the rank rewards will be insane as well. Shout out to all you brave Map 7ers like my man Triumphant. Uh, number one, 3,600 glory, 35,000 tier five basic, three tier five class catalyst fragment crystals, and a 10% fragment crystal to the number one alliance. 72,000 tier two alpha fragments is pretty amazing every week about as well. It's almost time to take on this new challenge, prepare your alliance, and get ready for the next iteration. Well, I mean, that's so exciting. And for those of you who are wondering when it was uh, to be, well, now you know. Uh, are you excited, YouTube? What are your thoughts on this? Comment below. Let me know. Let's keep this video uh, under 10 minutes, heck, under 8 minutes, and end it here. Thanks for watching.